knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, a man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. All signs point to a severe winter. Be prepared. If you want to be sure of even, dependable, healthful heat in any kind of weather, insist on Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite mined from the fields of northern Pennsylvania. The coal that has colored a harmless blue at the mine for your protection. You can't have me to the chair. You can't do it. Let me out of here. Let me. Paul Gordon, listen. Huh? I can't see anybody. Who's that? I am the shadow. <laughs> Stop. We haven't much time. We must hurry, Gordon. You're in the death house, charged with murder. Yes, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. But nobody knows it. Take courage, Gordon. The shadow knows. <laughs> All right, Margo, won't you sit down? I told Albol to serve our coffee here in the library. I should rather go on the terrace. No, I prefer it here. Then let me see you smile. That frown is most unbecoming. Lamont, give it up. Give what up, my dear? Drinking coffee? I'm serious, Lamont Cranston. When I foolishly let you know that... Do you remember what you said? It will be exactly five years next week. But there's still so much to do, Margot. Well, then let somebody else do it. Don't you realize that you can't keep on like this forever? Someone's certain to identify you, and when that someone does, someone else is certain to kill you. Perhaps, but until they do... Oh, darling, stop frowning. I don't mean necessarily to give up your work, Lamont, but this other... Let the shadow just disappear and, and come out openly. Join the organized forces of law and police. Won't you realize, Margot, that my entire usefulness to the organized forces of law and police lies in my remaining outside those forces, in remaining always the shadow... Would they approve my methods? Would they believe in my science? You would make them believe. You could make them approve. And in doing so, reveal my secrets, my knowledge. Reveal them and eventually let them fall into the hands of organized crime. <laughs> no, Margot. No one must ever know. No one but you. Why do you think I've devoted countless hours to investigating electrical and chemical phenomena? Why do you think I went to India, to, to Egypt, to China? What do you think I studied in London, Paris, and Vienna? except to learn the old mysteries that modern science has not yet rediscovered. The natural magic modern psychology is beginning to understand, and, well, magic that wouldn't seem so natural. I studied and learned for a purpose, my dear. All right, Lamont, I, I realize all that. But now, now the entire underworld has but one objective, to erase the shadow. And to me, that means... Until they know what the shadow is and who he is, what can they do? Stop and think how many criminals are either dead or in prison because of our activities. Why, even now, tonight, as we sit quietly here, somewhere, an innocent human being may be in desperate trouble. Somewhere, perhaps, there is a problem that can never be solved, except by the shadow. What did the doctor say, Grace? It was good news and, and bad, too, I'm afraid, dear. Well, whatever it was, dear, tell me. Well, he said the baby could be perfectly well again within a year. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Poor kid. She's had a tough time. Well, what else? Well, this part isn't so good, Paul. She'll need treatments during all that time. Paul, treatments cost money. I know. Well, we'll have to manage somehow. You didn't do a very good job marrying me, dear. Darling. Well, if I could only get a job. I've got my health and I've got brains. But no one seems to want them. Oh, they will, dear. They, they've got to. You're right about that. We're just about down to rock bottom. I've raised every cent I can on the house and car. 
There isn't anything left. You and I are still left, Paul. And we've got to take care of Sally. She's our daughter, Paul, and she's got to have her chance. And she's going to have it. Somehow. Tomorrow I'll start out and take anything I can get. Darling, perhaps tomorrow things will break for us. Yes. If only they don't break the wrong way. Excuse me, but are you the boss here? That's right. I'm looking for a job. Nothing doing, buddy. I'll do anything. Wait on table, wash dishes, anything at all. Well, I don't need any more help. Well, how about delivering things? I've got a car. Nope, I don't deliver nothing. Sorry, I don't need you. I see. All right. Thanks. Hey. Hey, you. What? You calling to me? Yeah, sit down. Have a beer. No, thanks. I, I don't drink. Anyhow, sit down. I meet a friend of mine named Lefty. My name's Red. <laughs> Look at my hair and you'll know why. <laughs> well, I'm glad to meet you both. And Gordon's my name, Paul Gordon. Well, did, do you want to talk to me about something? We might. Might be able to help you out. Sounds like you're looking for a job. You bet I am. I, I need one. You know anybody that could use me? Maybe. We don't know you yet. Huh. So far as that goes... I don't know you either. So you read the guy smart. Yeah, maybe too smart. Now, look here, Mr. Gordon. We need a car, and we need somebody to drive it for us. You understand? Well, I've got a car, and I can drive. Is it a good car? Has it got speed? I'll guarantee you up to 80. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, listen, kid. How about meeting us tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? All right. Where? Well, let's see. Uh, we're going to... Um... I got it. Right in front of the Uptown Bank. we got to go there first to cash a check. Well... How about $5 a day? That's so. But you'll remember, be there at 9 o'clock or you don't get no job. <laughs> don't worry, I'll be there. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Hey, buddy, you can't keep this car in front of the bank all day. Can't you see that sign, no parking? I'm not parking, officer. I'm waiting for a couple of men. I'm working for them. Oh, Hey, what's that? It sounds like shots in the bank. Hey, there. Oh, there you got him, Lefty. Here he is with the car. Come on, you start that bus for him. Step on it, fella. Hey, but you can't do that. Go on, I will shoot. Let him have it, Red. Hold him off. I'll hold him. We should never have shot that cop. Can't you get no more speed out of this car, fella? She's doing all she can. Shoot at the tires, Red. I missed him. Try the windshield. Say, let me out of this. Take the car. Don't think I'm in with you. That's just what we're figuring on. Now, here comes the curb. After you make that stop. Get ready, Red. I'm ready. I'm just leaving the evidence. Put it under the seat cushion. All right. Okay, goodbye, Gordon. Thanks for the Hey, work. hey, wait, you guys. Don't leave me like this. They'll think I did it. Hey, come on back, will you? Come back. Up in the hand. Come on, get him up. All right, officer. I, I haven't got a gun. I wasn't in this. They made me drive the car. Yeah, keep your hands up just the same. Go through the car, Charlie. Okay, Sarge. Now, fella, you might as well come clean on this. I haven't done anything. I tell you, I'm innocent. Hey, Sarge, I got it. Under the rear seat cushion. A bag full of bills and a gun. That's the gun that bumped off my buddy, Louie. And you say you're innocent. Y yes, I am. Well, it'll take more than saying so to keep you out of the electric chair. guilty of robbery under arms and of statutory murder. You have been shown to have had both motive and opportunity. The prosecution has piled up a mass of incontrovertible evidence, and I myself have no doubt of your guilt. Therefore, in accordance with the law, I direct that you be taken from here to the place from whence you came, and that there you be put to death in the manner stated by the law. And may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> hey, who was that? Where's that laugh? Who laughed? Bring that person before the court. Well, I... I don't know where he is, Your Honor. The laugh came from over there. 
in that corner. Yes. Yes, Your Honor, but there's no one in that corner. Only a shadow. <laughs> Here. Mother will be right here in the next room. Oh, God. Please help me. Help me. I don't know what to do. Yes? Who is it? My name is Margot Lane. I have a message for you, Mrs. Gordon. You're not a reporter, are you? No, I'm a friend. I've come to help. Oh, the, then please come in. What is it you want, Miss Lane? Mrs. Gordon... Your husband has a friend who's going to help him. Here's a thousand dollars in cash. What? That's for you and Sally. A thousand? Who was it sent this to me? Well, Dad, I can't tell you. But the message with it is not to lose hope. Oh, but there is hope for Paul, then. The man who sent this to you never fails. Who is he? Well, that I can't tell you. But, Miss Lane, you know him. Sometimes I wonder whether I do. I love him. But I wonder whether I know him. What do you mean? It's hard to tell whether I really know the man or only his shadow. Well, Lefty, tonight the fall guy goes to the chair. That's what he gets for being a sucker. Yeah, there's not a clue that even points our way. Not even a print. We had gloves on all the time. You had yours up for a minute when you were sitting next to him. Yeah, but uh, I didn't touch the wheel. Then we ain't left a clue. You think so? Who said that? You, Lefty? No, I, I thought it was you. It was I. You cannot see me. Who are you? And where are you? I am here in the room. In the shadow. You have pinned your crime on an innocent man. He shall not suffer. But you will. I don't know who you are, where you are, but you're bluffing anyway. You got no evidence. We didn't leave a clue. You did leave a clue. A clue that will send you to the chair. Where was it? Where was it? You're lying. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to believe that? Keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about the clue that you forgot. <laughs> Margot Lane. Paul Gordon is in the death house and is to die in the chair tonight. I am going to him now. We can still save him. Stand by for orders. In a few moments, we will return to the shadow. But before we do, let me stress this one fact. For home heating, anthracite is best. And America's finest anthracite is blue coal. Anthracite is the healthful fuel. It gives steady, uniform heat that helps prevent colds and cuts down doctor's bills. For with anthracite, there is no quick chilling of the house, such as you get with fuels of the on and off type, or with quick burning fuels that flare up and burn out. Bear in mind that heating plants in this part of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So before that cold snap catches you unaware, call your local blue coal dealer. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified directory under the word Blue Coal. Call him tomorrow and order a supply of America's finest anthracite. What? Have you. Have you got any word from the governor? I'm sorry, Gordon. No. The governor refuses to take any action. Thanks. I've got to go. Tonight? At 11 o'clock. What? What time is it now? Almost 10. Is there anything I can do for you? No. Thank you, boy. Very well. These guards will move you to another cell. I'll be back in a little while. Ready, Gordon? Yes, Scott. We're just going to move you to another cell. 
<laughs> what does it matter? The one you're going to is nearer... <laughs> nearer to the chair, is that it? <laughs> All right. Let's go. All right, Gordon. Walk to the left. We'll be right here behind you. Unlock the door into this preparation chamber, Pete. Okay. Just a second. All right. Go on through, Gordon. Watch him, Pete. I'll shut the door. Huh. What's the use of all this trouble? What chance have I got now? I'm afraid you haven't got much, fella. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? Holy smokes. Look behind you. Where? There. Oh. Oh, too bad. I hated to do that, but... There wasn't any other way, and he'll only be out for a while. Now, Gordon, listen to me. Hey, where are you? I can't see you anymore. Where have you gone? Back into the shadow. Now, Gordon, we haven't much time. Listen to me. No crime is perfect. There's always somewhere a loose end. The only reason that all crimes aren't solved is because there's some one fact that someone knows and doesn't tell. And sometimes they don't tell because they don't know that they know. I told everything I know in court. They wouldn't believe me then. Because you couldn't prove what you said. We are going after the proof now. You and I. How? I'm going to think with your mind. I don't know what you mean. Don't try to understand. Just do as I tell you. I want you to concentrate, Gordon. Fix your mind on everything that happened that day. Make mental pictures. I'll see what you see. I'll try it now. No. No, Gordon. Stop thinking about your wife and baby. How did you know I was thinking about I that? I saw it. In your mind. I see in my mind the pictures you create in yours. Oh, like television? Yes, or like mental telepathy or mind reading, hypnotism, whatever you choose. There's no time to talk. Stop talking. Think. I will. I will. I'm thinking now. The picture is getting clearer. That's better. Go on. The restaurant? The bar? Gordon, stop thinking about the electric chair. It blurs the picture. I'll try. I'll try. Ah. That's better. The car. In front of the bank. Yes. I see it. The policeman. The crowd. Yes. Wait a minute. The small man with red hair. He was the one you called Red. Yes. Yes. I see him. Crooked nose. Short. Glasses. I know that man. He's Red Sloan. I... I... It's hard to see. I know. Think for your life. Try hard. Yes. You started the car. The other, Lefty, was in front with you. Lefty. Lefty. See him for me, Gordon. Ah, uh, yes. A scar on his left cheek. Why didn't you mention that in court? I, I forgot. Never mind. Concentrate. Yes. Yes. Lefty couldn't keep you covered with a gun and look back at the same time. What did he do? He reached up and twisted the rear view mirror. Now we've got it. Ah, that's the loose end. That's where his thumbprint will be. Gordon, now I can save you. You've told the truth. You didn't know you knew. <laughs> Another one over here. 
Right, you're a fool for coming in here again. This is the place we picked up that kid that's burning tonight. What do you want to come in here for? This is as good a place as any, ain't it? Hey, telephone for you, Lefty. Telephone? Yeah, maybe you never heard of it, but it's a great invention. But nobody knows I'm here. Well, somebody knows because they're waiting on the phone for you. It's over there on the wall. Okay. Don't be too long, Lefty. Hello? <laughs> Say, what are you laughing at? Who is this? Lefty, did you ever hear of the shadow? Yeah. Say, what is this? Too bad about young Gordon, isn't it, Lefty? What do you know about that? The shadow knows. Who are you? What do you want? I want justice. Justice for Paul Gordon, Lefty. And I'm going to get it. But you ain't got no evidence. No. Perhaps there are some fingerprints, Lefty. Oh, no. We had gloves on. There couldn't be no fingerprints. Did you have gloves on all the time? Yeah, sure. I did. You're left-handed. Now listen carefully, Lefty. When you were sitting in the front seat of Gordon's car, your gun was in your left hand. Remember? Say, you ain't nobody. I, it's just... Say... How do you know? What did you do with your right hand? My right hand? You took off your right glove, didn't you? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, gosh, I'm going nuts. And you couldn't see the car that was chasing you because the angle of the rearview mirror was adjusted for the driver and you weren't driving, so... Do you remember what you did? No, no, I didn't. I didn't take it off. Are you sure you didn't reach up with your bare right hand and turn that rearview mirror? Are you sure, Lefty? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I did that. If the police find that fingerprint, you'll burn, Lefty. Just the way young Gordon's going to burn tonight. Goodbye, Lefty. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He hung up. No. No. I won't burn. Hey, Red. Red. Yeah, it's certainly gab long enough. Say, who was the guy? Never mind that. Where's that car of Gordon's now? In his garage. I guess I heard his wife. Cry. Listen. What? I got a hunch. There's some fingerprints of mine in that car. Red, we got to wipe him off of there, or maybe we'll burn in that chair, too. Come on, let's go. Commissioner. I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but I don't see what we can do. But I tell you, Paul Gordon is innocent. The men who committed the crime are free. Where did you get this information? Oh, that I can't tell you. Uh, Miss Lane, Paul Gordon was convicted of murder by due processes of law. Tonight he pays for his crime in the electric chair. If the police listened to every crank who came in here claiming new evidence... But they can't send an innocent man to the chair. They can't do it. No, but they can send a guilty man. And according to the evidence, Paul Gordon is guilty. Commissioner, suppose that uh, afterwards, when it's too late, they discover that Paul Gordon wasn't guilty after all. And suppose I testify that the police refused to listen. Well, what do you want me to do? If it's within reason, I'll do that. I want you right. to send some men to that garage. I want you to catch the guilty men and see that justice is done. I'm frightened. Brace up, Gordon. It won't be long. Keep your chin up, buddy. My turn next. So <laughs> long, fella. Good luck. Goodbye, kid. Where, where is he? He promised to save me. Who, son? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. He... He said he'd stand by. Now, steady, old man. Don't lose your nerve, Gordon. Open it up, men. No. no I won't go in there. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. I didn't, I tell you. He said he'd stand by. He wouldn't wait. Only a few minutes more. Just a few minutes. Don't take me in there yet. No, now, wait. Please, please. He said, please wait. Easy, Gordon. I'm sorry. But if I go in that door, I'm gone. It'll be too late then. Take him in, men. No, 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 wait. Oh, where are you? Where's that voice? Where did he go? Please come back. Warden. Warden. Wait a minute, men. Well, what is it? Warden, wait. 
The governor's on the phone. He says, stop. Hold up everything. What'd the governor say? He wants to talk to you on the phone, Warden. He says, don't electrocute this man. They've got the other two guys in Gordon's garage, trying to rub out some fingerprints. One of them was shot and died. But before he died, he spilled it all. This fellow didn't do it. It was a frame-up. Oh, thank God he got me in time. Gordon. Gordon. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, I heard it. That voice said he would. I'm free. You're not going to electrocute me, Warden. You're not. No. No, Gordon. The governor saved you. Governor? No. It wasn't the governor. It was somebody else. Or something else. Well, what do you mean, Gordon? Who saved you? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. I never really saw him. He was only a shadow. Before another adventure with the shadow draws to a close, John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, would like to say a few words. Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. If you're interested in having a more comfortable home this winter, be sure to call your local Blue Coal dealer. For he's more than a fuel dealer. He's an authority on modern home heating. You see, for more than six years, I've trained servicemen for these Blue Coal dealers. These men, known as John Barclay servicemen, have added thousands of... Families like yours to enjoy a greater degree of comfort and to save heating dollars, too. I'm going to read part of a letter typical of many received from satisfied customers using Blue Coal and John Barclay service. I quote in part, The service rendered by your John Barclay service men has been invaluable to me. We were burning a ton of coal a week and having great difficulty in keeping our fire going throughout the night. Your service man made me many helpful suggestions regarding the proper way to regulate the furnace and recommended the use of blue coal. We not only reduced the amount of fuel consumed to one half, but actually got more heat. Think of that, friends. In this case, a family cut their fuel bill in half simply by following the advice of a John Barclay serviceman whose services were given without charge. Now, you don't have to buy blue coal to benefit from John Barclay service. No matter what kind of fuel you're using or from whom you've been buying, if you have any heating problems, consult the blue coal dealer. He'll be very glad to place his John Barclay service man at your disposal to solve your problems. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. Real names are never used in these Shadow stories. <laughs> Crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> presents The Shadow, the man of mystery who strikes terror in the very hearts of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the Temple Bells of Nebon.
Friends, if you want to be sure that the fuel you get to heat your home this winter is safe, healthy, and economical fuel, then by all means, buy blue coal, the finest of Pennsylvania hard coal. Remember, this superior quality anthracite has been colored a harmless blue at the mines so that you can recognize it at a glance. So take the guesswork out of your fuel buying. Get America's finest anthracite. Ask for blue coal by name. Order a supply tomorrow. The bell shadow, the bells of Neva. They will reveal you. Your third mistake, Sadi, and your last. <laughs> no, it is your mistake and your last. This is the end of your career as the shadow. Oh, Margot, we'll make this a large evening. A couple of hours at the Club Caliph. Does that intrigue you? Oh, lovely, but not too late. I have an appointment at 10 in the morning at the Women's Club. They're trying to get some action on this terrible narcotic situation. Oh, yes, I read about that. Oh, the stuff's being peddled all over town. They found school children using it, society women. Why, it's already caused a half dozen suicides. Yes, I know. It's terrible stuff. Oh, it needs the shadow to get at the bottom of it. Yes, I know, dear, but for tonight, I, I do enjoy just being myself. The Mount Cranston dilettante. Let's be the shadow only in real emergency. Yes. You know, they, they tell me there's a lovely Indian dancer at this new club, Caleb. Indian dancer? Mm-hmm. You know, there's the place just there. Club Caleb, driver. Yes, sir. Lamont, you are going to do something about it. You've started already. Perhaps. Well, here we are. All right, driver. There you are. Thank you, sir. Oh, that looked like young Jerry Gleason just going in. Yes? I was that young man's father. I'd spank him and keep him home occasionally. Spoiled son of a wealthy sire. Mm. Here, let me have your coat. I'll check it with mine. Good evening, Jerry. Oh, oh hello, Miss Lane. Your father and sister well? I haven't seen them lately. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't wait right now. I've got to see someone, and it's important. I'm sorry. Uh, but, Jerry... Hello. What ails young Gleason? Well, I don't know. He seems awfully upset about something. He doesn't look well, either. Pale and shaky. Mm, you're right, he doesn't. I'm curious about that boy. Well, let's go in. <laughs> May I show you to a table, sir? Yeah, take this table by the dance floor, thank you. Oh, there's someone getting up to speak. We seem to be just in time yeah. for the main attraction. Apparently. Ladies and gentlemen... We take pleasure in presenting the fascinating and beautiful dancer of the Far East, Sadi Bel Ada. For our first number tonight, she will give you the dance of the cobra. Sadi Bel Ada. Look, isn't she lovely? Yes, real thing too, real Hindu. Hmm. It's odd, you know. Goodness. Look, she's taking a snake out of that wicker basket. A live cobra. Oh, heaven. You know, the cobra is connected with the old Indian mysticism, the most ancient of magic. See how she quiets the snake, makes it sway to the motion of her hands. Mm. It's a form of mesmerism. We've never improved on that with all our modern psychology. I hope its fangs have been removed. Well, they undoubtedly have. Oh, this is the one they call... Sade Belada. Jerry Gleason with that strange look in his eyes. An epidemic of narcotic smuggling. Sade Belada. Oh, how graceful she is. <laughs> she keeps looking over here, Lamont. Yes. It's coming this way. Well. Souvenir for the beautiful lady, Sad. Oh. Oh, a bracelet. Thank you. Bismillahir Ramanahir Rahim, fair lady. You know the tongue of Mother India, Saad. Only enough to make a small prayer. Only enough for that, Sadi Bel Ada. It is good sometimes to know a small prayer. Hmm. Just in case of an emergency? Yes. 
You are very wise, son. In case you should meet someone who could destroy you, son. I see. Cela. Just what did she mean by that? I don't know exactly. Funny sort of thing. She seems to know something about me. I'm trying to recall where I've seen that face. Beastie! What an exotic picture. Look, she's stopping at the table by the door. Why, it's young Jerry Gleason. She handed him something. Good Lord. He's going out with her. What's the matter now? It just struck me, Margot. That boy's face. The color of his skin. You mean drunk? Yes. The poppy of India. Oh, but not Jerry Gleason. Oh, that'd be too awful. And our own friend Claire Gleason, his aunt, who's tried so hard to steer him straight since his mother died, it would just about kill her. Come, Margot. We must do something. We're Margot. going to. I did come here tonight with a vague idea that this Indian dancer might have some connection with the thing. With her veil threats and Jerry's interest in her, I'm pretty sure but now. What are you going to do? I think the shadow will pay a call on Sadi Bellada in her dressing room. I think the shadow can strike back. Come in. Sadi. Yes? Uh, can anyone overhear us here in your dressing room? Oh, no. What do you want, Alexis? A message from the captain. What then? Tomorrow is the day. The police are getting closer. We sail tomorrow night at eight. I am not afraid of the police. But there is somebody else I am not sure about. You took care of Jerry Gleason? I gave him his medicine and sent him home. But you bring him tomorrow night? Do not fear, Alexis. Jerry will be with me when we sail. <laughs> I have a way to let him know. Good. But the air blows from that window. Close it, Alexis. Oh, too bad we have to terminate. The grand success of Sadi Bel and... The club caliph? Yes. But as the Americans say, business is business, yes. <laughs> and we still have a small business with the rich papa of Jerry Gleason. <laughs> no doubt the richest part of our business, sweet Sadie. Yes. The rich man will pay well. <laughs> <laughs> Who laughs? Where are you? Speak. I am here. In the shadow. But I'm afraid you can't see me. Speak. And say who you are. Have you never heard of the shadow? Oh, the shadow? So it is you. Have I not somewhere in the past seen your face and known your name? I think so. Uh, did you enjoy yourself tonight? I warn you, Sadi Bellada. Leave the Gleason boy alone. The boy to whom you give the evil drug. I have no fear of you, Shadow Side. I hold a greater power. I hold the power of the temple bells of Niban. Huh? You command the temple bells of Naban, do you? Yes. Either you lie or you desecrate a great gift. Put your strength against mine, White Ifandi, and you will see how I desecrate that gift. I can cast your little spells aside and make them nothing. I can kill you. Kill me? The shadow, Sadi? Yes. If you dare to come to me again, will you come? Who could refuse such an invitation? Especially when made by so charming a lady as yourself. Yes, I will come. 
And be sure you don't mistake my voice when I do come. Sadi Bellada. <laughs> Well, what is it, Sergeant? Uh, excuse me, Commissioner. Old man Gleason is outside and insists he's got to see you. Gleason? You mean Andrew Gleason? Sure, the big Wall Street banker, friend of the mayor. Shall I let him come in? Or... All this lame deficiency where it doesn't do any good. I want to see you, Commissioner. All right, Mr. Gleason. What the devil is this town coming to? Well, if you'll tell me what you're getting at. My I... boy is what I'm getting at. He's lying home there with the worst case of delirium cremens I ever saw. Spent the night sopping up liquor in these rotten honky tonks. Mr. Gleason, if you think the police department's going around playing wet nurse to all the spoiled kids in this town, is this what you came to see me about, Mr. Gleason? It certainly is. Well, I happen to have more important things on my mind right now. Then you better get this on your mind. Because if you don't, I'll see to it that there's somebody here who does. And I can do it. Good day to you. Well, seems like this was a busy day, sir. What with uh, drunken college boys and millionaires. If this is another of those, uh, Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Why, you, you... Don't lose your patience, Commissioner. The shadow has information that may help you. Young Jerry Gleason is becoming a drug addict. What? Yes. A victim of this flood of drugs being peddled on our streets. It might cost you your job. Are you interested, Commissioner? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the shadow to return, I want to relay a bit of information I'm sure homeowners here in the New England states will find particularly interesting. When buying your winter supply of fuel, bear this in mind. Anthracite coal is unequaled for home use. It is not a flashy fuel that burns furiously for a little while, then dies down completely. On the contrary, folks, anthracite burns slowly, steadily, evenly, all day long, and so enables you to maintain an even, healthful room temperature. That's why anthracite is called the solid fuel for solid comfort. And friends, remember this. Furnaces, cook stoves, and space heaters in this section of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So, insist on anthracite, but get the best. Order Blue Coal. It's America's finest. Blue Coal is mined by the Glen Alden Company, the world's largest producers of Pennsylvania anthracite. To guarantee you the greatest heating satisfaction at the lowest cost, Blue Coal is laboratory tested for purity and uniformity of size. So you see, friends... There's no need to take chances on unknown fuels. Order Blue Coal today. You will find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Margot? Yes. As though they came out of nowhere. The temple bells of Niban. Listen. Three soft notes will strike, and then the spell will be broken. They're gone. But Harlemont, here we sit in your apartment listening to weird temple bells. Where did they come from? How did you do it? Not too difficult, Margot, dear. For those who've learned its secret, its secret based on the phenomenon of telepathy combined with the old science of the yoga, the same magic which gives voice to a shadow. It's a very awe-inspiring demonstration. If there should be someone who could command the temple bells of Naban, the shadow would cease to be a shadow. You mean... You mean they could see? Yes. At the last stroke of the bell, I would be only what I am. 
Lamont Cranston. My magic invisibility, so to speak, dispelled by this greater power. And, and you think there is someone with this power? I'm not sure. Years ago, in India, a yogi priest, keeper of the Temple of the Cobras at Delhi, taught me the ancient mysteries. He taught me the mesmeric trick that the underworld calls invisibility. There was a small girl, his niece, who used to sit and listen, staring up at us with her round, dark eyes. She was very clever. Clever. I've often wondered what became of her. But the cobras. You don't mean the Indian down there at the club camp. I'm not sure, Margot. I'm not sure. Oh, but this worries me, Lamont. Aren't you going into dangers too big for you? Don't worry about me, Margot. Worry about the boy and all other poor, miserable wretches in the toil of this awful drug traffic. Is young Beeson safe? Yes, his father made him go to bed. They thought he'd been drinking too much. Well, I guess it's time I got busy. Have you found out anything else? One or two things. In Sade Bellada's dressing room, I found a note signed by a Captain Marlin of the freighter Albora Castle. I think there's some connection there. I'm going to find out. First, though, I'm going to the zoo. The zoo? Yes. Yes, I want to borrow a decorative little reptile from my friend the curator. He's usually very obliging. Who opened that door? From the doorknob. A snake. Don't touch it. It's all right. It's a dead one. There's a note with it. So, she's not bluffing. She does know who I am. Oh, Lamont, I'm, I'm frightened for you. What does it say? It says, dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Was I mistaken... Then it's Father Bellada. Oh, Lamont, Margo, it's a challenge. But the bells. The bells of Niban. Oh, I'm afraid the shadow this time will get beyond his death. We shall see, Margo. We shall see who is stronger. Sadi and the bells of Niban. Or the shadow. And the snake. Show them. They think they can keep me a prisoner in my own house. Putting me to bed as if I were some half grown kid. What? What's that? Jerry. You hear me? Is it you, Sadi? Yes. My voice in your thoughts. Listen, Jerry. Come to me at the dock where we met before. Your medicine is waiting. Yes. Yes. Go aboard the ship I told you about. The Elbora Castle. You and I, Jerry. Yes. Yes. I am waiting, Jerry. But they've locked me in. Go through the window. Jerry, come now. Yes, Sadi. The window. Margot Lane, stand by for orders. Jerry Gleason has escaped from his house. But I have followed him to the waterfront, and I know where he's going. Get word to Commissioner Weston. Time is short. I accept Sadi's challenge. Send harbor police to the freighter Albore Castle, which lies in the harbor just off Bay Ridge shore, ready to sail. Hurry, Margot. Oh, 
let me hear in this cabin, Saribel. My little. Why do you tremble so, Alessio? I wish we were far at sea, on our way to Rio. Oh, be patient. The ransom note was delivered to Papa Gigi? Yes. What was that? But there is nothing. Oh, it's you, Captain. Yes. We are leaving, Captain. Yes, we're getting underway now. We've got the boys stowed safely below, below decks. And the rest of the medicine? Oh, we got rid of that, what was left of it. A nice clean-up for all hands, not counting this Gleason job. That'll net us another 100,000, or nothing. Oh, we're fixed whichever way the dice roll. And after that, we live like kings, without a care, yes? Not even a conscience to bother you. What? Sadie, he has come. I was afraid. Who said that? I did, Captain. Shadow. So you're the one with your trick ghost talk and magic, eh? I'll make a shadow out of you soon enough. Not that way, Captain. No? Here, lock that door, Alexis. It is locked, Captain Marlin. But but the portholes. No one can get through those. Not even a shadow. <laughs> Save your laugh, whoever you are. We've got you. You're in this cabin somewhere. And this ship is outward bound. Laugh that all. I think you may have made three mistakes, Captain. One too many. Yes. Yes, Captain. But I do not make mistakes, Sad. That remains to be seen, Sade Bellada. Then you will see. And me the wicker basket, Alex. Hey, what do you want to do? Yes, Sade. I call the temple bells of Niban, Captain. The shadow has the power to blind your eyes. A trick he learned in India from a yogi who was my uncle. But I have a better trick. When the last bell sounds while the sacred cobra dances, you will see the shadow only as a man. Be ready to shoot, Captain. I'm ready. And now, my cobra, to dance with the bells of Niban. I wouldn't open that basket if I were you, Sadi Bellada. You watch my pretty cobra, Sad. He may find you even before the captain's bullet. You will die just as quickly. Pishti. Dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Bismillahi Ramani Rahim. Make your small prayer, Sad. And now, my pretty one, begin to dance. Be careful, Sadi Bell. The cobra moves toward you. My own pretty cobra. He knows me. You hear the bells, Shadow? The temple bells of Niban? I hear them. When the last bell strikes, we shall see our prisoner. And I am waiting for that minute. But Sadi, the cobra! Look out! He's going to strike! Alexis! Stop it! Quick! Drop the basket over Alexis! Kill it! Sadi! Sadi! The shadow warned you, Sadi Pelada. You take credit for this too, do you? No. Sadi should have known it was not her cobra in the wicker basket. It was mine. She's dead. What's that? Who is it? Captain Allen, the police, the border. No, please, Captain Mullen, you do not shoot. Stand back here, drop that gun. I'll fix him. Put the bracelets on both of them, Sergeant. Right. Dope smugglers, kidnappers, and from the looks, murderers. This time, the police were too smart for you. Oh, decidedly. Huh? Who's that? Thanks for coming, Commissioner. You were very helpful. <laughs> and now 
before today's adventure with the shadow comes to a close, John Barclay, Blue Coal's own heating expert, is here tonight to give us another of his practical talks on automatic heating. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. Last week, we discussed the importance of uniformly heated homes in avoiding cold. I told you how home temperatures could be kept uniform and automatically controlled with a blue coal heat regulator. I explained that the cost was only $18.95 plus a small installation charge. Now for a word about the convenience of this blue coal heat regulator. With one of these automatic regulators in your home, it is no longer necessary for you to adjust dampers by hand. The regulator eliminates need for frequent attention to the furnace. What do you have to do, Mr. Barclay? You simply tend to your furnace once in the morning and once at night. Just think of that, friends. You can enjoy the comfort and convenience of an evenly heated home, and yet you can come and go all day long without a thought or worry about the fire. Is it any wonder I'm so enthusiastic about the blue coal heat regulator? And too, although it costs only $18.95, it does about everything that the elaborate and much more expensive equipment does that many of your friends have. So, folks, why not get to your blue coal dealer tomorrow and ask him more about this blue coal heat regulator? At the same time, if you have any heating problems, discuss them with your blue coal dealer, too. He is the best informed heating expert in your community. With the assistance of his John Barclay trained serviceman, he will be able to save you money and help make your home more comfortable this winter than ever before. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>